My name is Erica. I'm a 32-year-old, tirelessly navigating the world and parenting. My husband, James, is two years older than me, a real science geek. He works in a research lab, a childhood dream of his. While he seems to be busy every day, he's content doing the work he loves. Our son, Joseph, is three years old. He seems to have taken after his father, being deeply fascinated by observing and experimenting. These days, he's obsessed with the goldfish he won out of a fall fair. Our daughter, Maria, is one year old. She loves to eat, and her chubby little cheeks are the adorable source of healing in our household. Protecting this ordinary family is my main task, and I'm generally happy and enjoying life, except for one thing. Erica, what's for dinner? My mother-in-law asks in the evening as I soothe my daughter, who often gets fussy. It does and starts to finish up the dinner prep, as usual. My mother-in-law buzzes in through the intercom and intrudes into our home. Although her visits are regular, they occur weekly at this time to the point that my son barely reacts anymore, his eyes not leaving the TV. Oh dear, fried food again? You really shouldn't. All this greasy food is no good. You need to be more considerate of your husband's stomach when he comes home tired from work and your grandson is still so small. It's bad for his tummy. But it's Joseph's favorite. That's probably because you keep feeding him junk. Here, I made stew and soup. Make sure he eats these. It's important that he gets accustomed to eating homemade food from a young age. Sigh. My mother-in-law began to line up the stew and soup she brought, packed in a large Tupperware, on the dining table. As I look at the stew, full of beans and carrots, which will last us for about three days, I feel heavy-hearted. Come on, don't just stand there. I'll take home what you made since it can't be held. Pack it up for me. Even if the meal didn't turn out well, we can't just waste food. This too is a usual occurrence. I took out the Tupperware that contains fish stew from her last invasion and start packing up the fried chicken. Satisfied with the still warm meal now in her possession, my mother-in-law left without even glancing at her grandchildren. As soon as she heard the door close, my son quietly turned to look at me. Did grandma take my fried chicken again? My heart aches for my post-son who muttered sadly. Yeah, she did, but I left some meat behind, so it's okay. Just wait a bit, okay? Hooray! Seeing my son jump for joy at my words eases my worries as I reheat the oil. However, the uneasiness in my heart didn't fade. Since the beginning of our marriage, my mother-in-law has been a bit too involved, but it has gotten worse in the past year. My mother-in-law's habit of invading our dinner prep time once a week continued. In the beginning, she would just criticize my cooking and child-rearing while leaving behind her own stew. But about six months ago, she started taking my meals back with her to prevent us from eating them. It's hard to believe that my mother-in-law, living alone since my father-in-law passed away, is able to consume a meal meant for three. I'm certain it must be getting thrown out. I make baby food, take care of the kids, and cook our meals. It's tough, but the joy on my family's faces makes it all worth it. And yet, she's taken all-night dishes, the fried chicken, the beef stroganoff, the casseroles, the hamburgers, all of it. After all, my family owns a restaurant, and I've been taught cooking by my father from a young age, so I have some confidence in my cooking skills. I believe my food is tastier than my mother-in-law's overly sweet stew. Being criticized by such a mother-in-law and having my food taken away stirs up frustration and irritation in me. However, I am torn between my son and not wanting to disrespect his grandmother. My mother-in-law still again. I served dinner to my husband, who came home after the kids were asleep, and he clearly grimaced. Only a portion of fried chicken was left for our son, so I heaped two servings of stew onto a big platter for him. It can't be helped. It's your mom who brings it over. If you don't like it, you should tell her. Yeah, I guess. As usual, he gives a vague reply while picking at the stew with his spoon. She barges in without considering Maria's nap time, and Joseph is left watching his favorite food get snatched up. 
Well, she's lonely since dad passed. That was a while ago. How long am I supposed to put up with this? Yeah, I guess. Really? Normally, my husband is reliable, but when it comes to his mom, he immediately goes on the defensive. Another fruitless conversation tonight, and I let out a deep sigh. At this point, the only relief is that there's been no talk of living together with her. One day, as I was growing tired of the daily routine, my mother-in-law barged in during dinner as usual, but said something different. Erica, we're all gathering at my place for New Year's this coming year. Since we lost dad this year, we couldn't do anything, remember? There are some relatives from your dad's side who helped out during the funeral, right? We're inviting them to our home as a way to say thank you. That sounds tough. I gave a disinterested reply to my mother-in-law, who was sitting back and talking proudly. Such a grandiose idea was typical of my mother-in-law, but can she really host and entertain people all of a sudden when we've always gathered at my father-in-law's brother's house or her parents' home during New Year's and Christmas? Noticing my attitude, my mother-in-law raised her eyebrows as if she were looking at someone slow. What are you talking about? This is if it's someone else's problem. You're helping too. What? Come stay from the 30th and help clean. Stunned by the outrageous decision, I quickly try to refuse, but Maria is still little. Just use a baby carrier, that's how all the women in the old days worked. That might be true, but you're also responsible for the New Year's meal. Don't dare to repack store-bought stuff or make anything bad. I don't want to be embarrassed. What? By can't on the first day, we'll invite dad's side of the family, and on the second day, we'll invite my sister's family and daughter. It'll be busy. My mother-in-law, who found it quite annoyed before, started to get excited. Wait a minute. No matter how you look at it, the person who's going to be busy is me, not you. You should fulfill your duties as the wife of the eldest son. Do you understand? Having said what she wanted to say, my satisfied mother-in-law left, leaving behind her beef stew. She didn't forget to pack her bag with the shrimp and that had just been prepared, though, leaving me and my son in a daze as she stormed off. Of course, I reported that to my husband that night, and he was as bewildered as I was. Ha, huh, inviting even dad's relatives for a party from New Year's without dad around? That's what's happening. Well, mom must be lonely. Mumbling his usual line, my husband finally pushed me over the edge. You are always like that. Put yourself in my shoes for once. Then, my husband, who made an obvious I'm in trouble face, fell silent, but thankfully, he seemed to think this time was unusual, and he let out a resigned sigh. All right, I understand. I'll handle the cleaning and entertaining the relatives. Really? I responded, his proposal lifting my spirits. But could you still prepare the New Year's feast for us? Just this year, please humor my mother. I bet everyone will be thrilled with your cooking, Erica. He pleaded, staring at a plate of my mother-in-law's homemade beef stew. I find it hard to refuse him since he already conceded to do all the other tasks. PSI fine, just this year. Thanks. I can't wait to taste Erica's New Year's feast. God, you're so enthusiastic. I guess being praised doesn't feel so bad, and I don't hate cooking for people. So I braced myself and agreed to prepare the New Year's feast. When my husband told his mother he'd be staying overnight to help clean and prepare, she frowned and complained. Don't let the breadwinner do such tasks. But seeing her son hustling around the house for her sake, my mother-in-law seemed quite satisfied. And then on New Year's Day around noon, Erica, is the chicken noodle soup ready yet? I'm just getting the parsley ready, I reply, bustling around the kitchen, preparing various dishes. You're so inefficient. I'll take the New Year's feast to the table, she offered. Sorry, I thought, wishing she could understand the effort it takes to prepare a meal for 20 people. It's really, really tough. Finally, I finished serving the food and joined the family gathering. My husband seems to have taken our daughter to another room for a nap. 
Preparing a feast for 20 people was tough, but it feels good to see everyone happily eating my cooking. However, that feeling was fleeting. This roll cake looks so perfect, like it's store-bought. Del, thank you. Do you're such a flatter. The sour flavor in this slaw is perfectly balanced. The vinaigrette freshens up your mouth. Yes, well, with a feast like this, the flavors are often strong, so I made it a little more sour than usual. Something is off. Whenever someone tries to compliment my cooking, my mother-in-law swoops in with a comment. Something is definitely off. The source of my discomfort became clear when Carol, my father-in-law's sister, commented, Erica, your mother-in-law is a wonderful cook, isn't she? Ha! Huh? I respond, unable to comprehend what she just said. Carol, ever the chatterbox, kept talking. Is this New Year's feast all handmade by Karen? That's impressive. What? I haven't made a New Year's feast in so long. I was going to let my daughter-in-law handle it, but she's simply hopeless at cooking. Even when I offered to teach her, she never comes over. What? My mother-in-law talking about struggles she's never even faced and it's messing with my head. Wow, dear Erica, you should learn from Karen while she's still healthy. James must miss the taste of his home cooking too. The way to a man's heart is through his stomach, huh? Ada. The men around Carol left, seemingly to mock me. Yes, Karen, the beef stroganoff you gave me the other day was delicious. You're amazing, able to cook both Japanese and Western cuisine. It's not a big deal, really. But I'm glad you liked it. My mother-in-law grinned and modestly declined the compliment, but the beef stroganoff was undoubtedly something I made. As I stare at my mother-in-law in shock, she silently nods. Go along with it. It appears that my mother-in-law has been passing off all the food I made, including the New Year's dishes and other dishes she took home as her own, and serving them to all the relatives. I hate the idea of going along with her lie. It's outrageous, especially considering how she's always criticized my cooking. Overwhelmed by the crowd, I find myself unable to respond. The one to break my silence was my son. Mom, this omelet is delicious. The high voice of the young child echoed throughout the room, silencing the noisy adults for a moment. Oh, Joseph, your grandma made this for you. It's a dish called a rolled omelet, presumably Carol is trying to help my son out of kindness. But my son responded with, why dies? What, but it's delicious, huh? That's why it's mom's omelet. Grandma's omelets are super sweet and gritty, not tasty at all. The adults exchange confused looks as my son passionately made his case using gestures for emphasis. Of course, my mother-in-law is panicking. Wait, Erica, don't teach the child to lie. What? Who's the one lying here, mom? Am I a liar? My son looks up at me with an anxious expression. Seeing him like this, my blood boils. I was a fool. I don't care about my husband's or mother-in-law's reputation, even though she's a sarcastic mother-in-law, she's also my husband's mother and my son's grandmother. So I put up with her, but a grandmother who would turn her grandchild into a liar to save face is nothing but evil. If protecting this child means becoming a demon, then so be it. I take a deep breath and straighten my back. Joseph, you're not a liar. The one who's lying is grandma. Ha! Huh? She never expected me to defy her. My mother-in-law looks like a deer caught in headlights. I stand up and point at the table demonstratively. I made all of this, from one end to the other. Ha! Huh? The relatives begin to murmur in a panic. My mother-in-law started to make a scene. W-A, 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 wait, Erica. You've been lying all along. Are you going crazy? I'm not lying. Carol, you said you got beef stroganoff from your mother-in-law, didn't you? Carol, caught in the middle, looks at me in surprise. Ah, eh, ah, it was really delicious. I made that too. 
What? You, you, you're the worst. How dare you try to take credit for your husband's mother's cooking and set me up? You're the worst daughter-in-law. Can you tell me the recipe for the beef stroganoff, wa? Can you tell me that? That is the mother-in-law mumbled incoherently, and then, as if struck by a sudden inspiration, she raised her voice. It, it's a secret recipe. I can't tell it in public. It's okay if you don't mention the exact ingredients and quantities. Um, the relatives who were taken aback by the ugly fight between me and my mother-in-law seemed to start to realize who was right. Erica, that's enough. Perhaps he had finished putting our daughter to bed. My husband, who had been standing near the sliding door without me noticing, reproached me with this stern voice and expression as if he aligned with him. The mother-in-law clung to him like the heroine of a tragedy. Yeah, James, what's with your wife? She's calling me a liar. It's too much. The one who is too much is you, mom. What? My mother-in-law's mouth gaped open. This feast, Erica spent the whole day making them while looking after the children. Trying to claim that as your achievement is just the worst. James and Carol, the only thing mom made is the pile of stew there. Did you eat it? Ha! Huh? Oh, ah! And Carol, who got involved again, she is chewing her stew like a cow and is she ruminating on the taste of that very sweet stew, it was crazy sweet, wasn't it? Mom thinks that if it's sweet, it's delicious. She's always been concerned about salt and oil but uses sugar with no restraint. Thanks to that, all the dishes she makes days like sugar cubes. Is, is that so? The beef stroganoff was also made by my wife. If there were any other dishes recently shared from my mother, everyone should assume that my wife made them. Well, then, the meatloaf too, that was me. And the casseroles and the shrimp pretend that was me. Being exposed by her own son, the relatives take a step back from my mother-in-law. Don't you think so, mom? My mother-in-law, with all her lies laid there, blinked in surprise. Whether she has given up on the deceit or is trying to appeal to her son's feelings, she started again. W.H., why, why are you siding with your wife? I'm your mother. I didn't want to say this to you either, mom. I thought you were just lonely since dad passed away and that's why you interfered too much in our house. I asked my wife to put up with it, but this is just plain bullying. I don't need to defend you then. Don't ever visit my wife and kids again. Having decisively cut off my crying mother-in-law, my husband started to clean up the holiday dishes and then bowed his head to the relatives. Sorry for causing a commotion on New Year's Day. Erica, Joseph, let's go home. J. James, my mother-in-law screamed. Our son, who stood up holding his father's hand, glanced at his grandmother. Grandma, where's your apology, huh? When you lie, you should say you're sorry. Then you can be forgiven, right? Isn't that right, mom? Well, I understand. We should forgive her in front of the kids, however, this isn't a situation where an apology alone would suffice. But that moment of hesitation was needless. My mother-in-law is biting her lips so hard it looked like she was going to bleed, and it was obvious that she was never going to apologize. At the sight of his mother, my husband sighed as if he had run out of patience. Grandma is an adult, but she can't even say I'm sorry. That's sad, isn't it? Let's go home and eat mom's delicious New Year's feast, okay? Gur, leaving behind my growling mother-in-law and bewildered relatives, we left my in-law's house, holding my sleeping daughter and the New Year's feast. We then went straight to my parents' home, where we served the feast, and everyone delightedly ate. I had worked hard to see those happy faces, so I was filled with joy. Of course, my husband apologized profusely and promised never to meet my mother-in-law again. Afterwards, it seems things were terrible at my in-laws. In the awkward silence, my father-in-law's relatives dispersed, leaving behind only the stew and some reality dishes, and said, just as we thought, with a smear. Apparently, it was a well-known fact among my mother-in-law's relatives that she was a terrible cook. 
She boasted about serving the New Year's feast, so we wondered what kind of magic she would use. She was probably jealous of you since James and Joseph praise you for your cooking. Sorry for causing trouble. My husband's sister, who learned the details over the phone, consoled me. Carol also called me and said, I'm sorry for blaming you based on my one-sided assumptions, and apologized. It turns out that Carol also enjoys cooking, and we ended up having a great time talking about the beef stroganoff recipe she wanted to learn. With no more misunderstanding with my husband and a new cooking buddy, my heart felt light, and I was in high spirits at the start of the new year. Of course, my mother-in-law wouldn't back down easily, but we were fully prepared. Just as the New Year's festivities were ending, and I was preparing dinner, my phone rang. It was from my mother-in-law. Excuse me, it's dinner time, and where are you? Do your duty as a wife. Are you shamelessly coming to our house again? I replied with a sigh, causing my mother-in-law on the other end of the line to explode. How rude! Since you didn't come to apologize, I had to come all the way here. If you apologize and explain the misunderstanding to the relatives, I'll forgive you. Come back home quickly. No, thank you. What? You'll be in trouble if you're ostracized by all the relatives. I'm not troubled at all, huh? After all, it was you who was ostracized by relatives for putting up a foolish facade. I'm planning to cook with Carol soon. What she probably didn't imagine was that I'd be getting along with my father-in-law's relatives, bypassing her. In other words, everything, including the fact that she was being distanced by her husband's relatives, had been leaked to me. How is that? Do you still have any tricks up your sleeve? I gave my astonished mother-in-law an additional blow. Also, I will not return to that house anymore. What? Yes, the kids and I have been staying at my parents' home since New Year's Day. Now that the New Year celebrations are over, we plan to look for a new home here. Originally, we were living close to my in-law's place due to my mother-in-law's strong wishes, but my husband's workplace is closer to my parents' home. Didn't James tell you not to approach your daughter-in-law ever again? But you don't listen any better than a child, so we decided to physically distance ourselves. Now only my husband lives in that house. Of course, once he's prepared, you'll also leave. What? Where, 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 where are you? Who knows? Wait a minute. Do you think you can get away with treating your husband's mother like this? Yes. My husband and sister-in-law have given me their approval, so it's okay. Wait, what? Thank you for everything until now. The thought of never seeing you again makes me happy. Goodbye. Well, wait. Arg, hog. I hung up the phone with a slight chuckle at my mother-in-law's scream like a villain from a superhero show. Then I blocked her numbers so I wouldn't have to hear that voice ever again. Two years later. Man, what's for dinner today? Meatloaf, yay. I love your meatloaf. It's my favorite in the world. Me too. I love it too. It's my favorite in the universe. Dad, no fair. In the living room, my family is frolicking and eagerly waiting for my cooking. Watching this heartwarming scene, I prepare the meatloaf and the kitchen. The dining table surrounded by my family, who are eating my cooking with a smile, warms my heart again today. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and if you're curious to see where this journey takes us next, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss a single update. Your support is what keeps this channel alive and kicking, and every like, comment, and share means the world to us. We've got plenty more stories, insights, and surprises coming your way, so stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.